Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. Buenos dias. ¿Cómo están? Hemos estado en México las últimas dos semanas, entonces voy a predicar en español. Just kidding. We were, uh, we were in Mexico the last two weeks, so I'm thinking in Spanish. I thought I would uh, preach in Spanish today, but I won't do that. Some of y'all look at me like, whoa, look at that white boy speak Spanish. <laughs> Did y'all know that I grew up in Guatemala? Did you know that I was a DJ on a radio station when I was just 16? Yeah, it was called Radio, it was Metro Serio. So every evening I'd get on like... Muy buenas tardes, estamos aquí en Guatemala, Centroamérica. La radio 102.9 metro serio de la ciudad capital de Guata, Guatemala con lo mejor de la música en inglés. Anyway. All right, let's get serious. We're in church. All right. So my name's Joel. I'm the teaching guy here. And uh, I've been gone the last few weeks. So you're like, who is that guy up there? That's who I am. And we're going to finish our series today called Fish tales. And we're going to talk a story today about, it's, it's a story you're probably really familiar with. In fact, it's probably, you might think I'm preaching a sermon Marcus spoke three weeks ago, but it's not. It's a different passage we're going to be using today. But we're going to look today at what to do uh, when what you're doing isn't working. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm a not very much of a fisherman, okay? So a few weeks ago, Pastor Marcus had all of, this, uh, all of the senior leadership of the church get together, and we started to plan for next year, uh, for this year it would be. And uh, we stayed at this place in Rockport, and they were like, oh, man, there's really good fishing here. And I was like, oh, really good fishing, okay. So uh, I got, what, after we would do our, our planning and stuff, Jeremiah, our worship pastor, and I, we'd go and we'd sit on the dock and we'd fish. And we caught nothing. And that's been my experience with most of my fishing ex escapades. I never catch anything. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know the right bait. I don't know anything. But I just throw it out there. And anyways, so when it comes to fishing, I'm usually like, well, this isn't going to go well, right? Because I never catch anything. And it's usually kind of a boring thing to me. Well, uh, Jeff, a guy from the church here, Jeff showed up one day, uh, Friday night, after we had pretty much done most of our planning. He was there to help plan for the men's events this year. And he brought all this fishing gear. And he's like, man, tonight we're going to go fishing. And I'm like, oh, we're going to go fishing. And I was like, I don't want to go fishing. I know how it goes. You throw the thing in the water, you never catch anything. And, um, so it was about 9.30 at night, and uh, Jeff's like, all right, it's time to go out fishing. And I'm like, what, 9.30 at night? I'm like, man, this, I usually go to bed at 9.30, you know? <laughs> Y'all think I'm out climbing mountains and stuff, but most of the time I'm in bed by 9.30. So uh, I was about to go literally like, like call it a night. And all the guys took off, and they went, left, and I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll go see what they're up to. And so I found my way. It was all pitch black where we were, but I found my way down to this dock. And uh, when I got down there, man, the guys are just pulling in fish. Like, they would throw, they would cast the line, and boom, they'd hit a fish and pull it in. They're just pulling in fish left and right. I'm like, this is incredible. I've never seen any, like, I've never experienced this kind of fishing where you're actually catching things. <laughs> And uh, Jeremiah's like, hey, you want to take over for me? And I was like, oh, here we go. I'm going to take over, and then nothing's going to I'm not going to catch anything. I'm going to look like the idiot here. And so he's like, yeah, take it. So Jeff's like, <clears throat> he's like, get, get the bait over there. So I get the bait. I put it on. I put the shrimp. And, man, I throw it in the water. And boom, I start pulling in fish one after another after another. And I was like, oh, this is incredible. No wonder people like fishing. <laughs> and I, I just remember thinking, you know, you know reason this is working? Because Jeff knows what he's doing. I don't. Jeff knew the right bait to use. He had the right gear. I mean, this fishing pole he gave me was like, it was like, we could cast it out. There was like butter, man. It was like whoosh, pulling in. You know, I was using like $10 fishing poles. And so we had the right gear. We had the right bait. And we had the right time of night. And we had the right location because Jeff knew what he was doing. I did not know what I was doing. So what I normally did when I thought of fishing is I was like, well, fishing doesn't work for me. And it got me thinking about how much in life, every one of us in here, we come to a point in our life where we're trying something and it's just not working. And we say something like this, man, I'm trying, but it is just not working, Joel. Like I'm trying to get my relationship right with my husband. 
I'm trying to get our marriage back on track. I've been trying for years and it's just not working. Apparently, I'm just not supposed to have a good marriage. And so you just give up. You go, well, this is the way it's going to be. And you settle for mediocre and you figure this is just the way it is. And maybe some of you, you've got that relationship problem with your kids. And you're like, man, I'm trying to restore this relationship with my kids. I know I made some mistakes early on. I'm trying to get things back on track, but it's just not working. And man, I come to church every Sunday and I raise my hands and I sing and, and I listen to the message and I try and apply it, but it's not working, Joel. It's just not working. Some of you in your finances, you're going, man, every time I think we're going to get over the hump financially, the transmission breaks or the pipe, pipe breaks at the house and we have all these expenses and you're like, I'm trying to be good with my money and it's just not working. Some of you, you're like, this is the year I'm going to get my health under control. I'm just going to, man, I'm going to lose that weight. I'm going to get my, I'm going to get fit. I'm going to get this down. And, 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 and here it is March and, and you're back to driving through that Whataburger drive through every week, every day. And you're like, man, I tried to get healthy, but it's just not working. We all come to a place in our lives where we look at it and we go, it's just not working. And what do we do when we get to something where it's just like, it's just not working? You start to go, well, maybe it works for them, but it doesn't work for me. And you start to get discouraged. Maybe you get a little depressed get a little frustrated with yourself. Maybe you get a little angry at God. You're like, God, man, where's this abundant life Jesus promised? I'm not experiencing abundant life here. What's wrong? That must be for other people. What's wrong? I'm trying, but it's just not working. We're gonna look at a story of time the disciples were trying something that wasn't working. And it's gonna be reminiscent of a message Pastor Marcus gave a few weeks ago. And you're like, is this the same story? It's not the same story. It's a different story. We pick up the story. It says, right after Jesus has died and he's come back to life. And the disciples have seen him a few times at different places. He's popping up here and there. And now nobody's quite sure what Jesus is up to, but he's showing up at random places. Well, the disciples, they go back. And remember, Peter had denied Christ. And he's like in this kind of, kind of guilt riddled state where he's like, man, I denied Christ in front of like my key moment and I messed up. Well, this is what happens. We pick up the story and it says, afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. And it happened this way. Simon Peter... Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana and Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee and the two other disciples were together. Peter says, I'm going out to fish. He's like, you know what? I know how to do that. I used to be a fisherman. I'm going to go fish. Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and they got in the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Now keep in mind, these guys are professional fishermen. This is not Joel we're talking about here. These guys are professional fishermen. They know how to catch fish, but it's just not working for them that night. They're doing what they know to do, and it's just not working. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples didn't realize it was Jesus. So they didn't know it said Jesus showed up. So some guy just randomly yells at them from the shore, and he says, Hey, friends, have you, you caught anything? And they said, No, we haven't. So he said, Hey, throw your net on the right side of the boat. <clears throat> And you'll catch some fish. You'll find some. So they did. And they were unable to haul in the net because of the large number of fish. Let's remember, this is reminiscent of the first time that Jesus called Peter. He had been fishing all night and hadn't caught anything. This is the same thing, the same miracle done again three years later after he's been hanging out with Jesus. Then the disciple who Jesus loved, now that's John. So when you read anything that John wrote in the book of John, he, he's real humble. He never refers to himself as John. He's like, the guy Jesus really loved? <laughs> the disciple Jesus loved said to Peter, it's the Lord. Like, we know this miracle. Like, we know how this rolls with him. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it's the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him for he had taken it off and he jumped in to the water. Now, this passage has a lot of layers of truth in it, okay? One of the things that you'll learn about the Bible is I've been... I've been reading the Bible now for over 40 years. And every time I read it in different seasons of life, there's new truths revealed to me. And there's a bunch of different truths in this story. And I think there's three specific things that stand out that I want to share with you today from this story that apply to our lives when we're looking at what we're doing and it's just not working in our finances, in our relationship with our kids, with our spouse. And here's the three truths, okay? First of all, when what you're doing isn't working, it might be that God is trying to get your attention and get through to you. Sometimes we do stuff that's always worked before and it's not working anymore. And maybe God's saying to you, hey, it's time for a change. I need you to do something differently. And the reason it's not working is because I don't ever 
I don't ever pour new wine into old wineskins. You've got to be flexible because I want to do some new stuff in you. So it may be that God's trying to get your attention if it's not working. The second thing is, it, or it, it, it may be that you're the problem. We'll move along. <laughs> or it might be a timing issue. It may be that the timing's just not right. So I want to look at those three areas because I think we can get that, all of that from this story. And the fact that when Jesus gets involved, just like when Jeff came in with the right stuff, it worked out like it was supposed to work. So I want to look first at this one. When, 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 God's, when you're doing what isn't working, it might be God trying to get through to you. You know, a lot of times what I see with people is they feel God, that God speaks to them and tells them to do something or they, 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 they start out strong, right? They start out strong, but then once things start to get hard, they start to try and do things on their own. You remember how great it was when you first had your kids? Remember how wonderful it was when they came along? Like, oh, this is so wonderful and glorious. This little child, and oh, it's just so sweet. And then they started talking back to you. Remember that? And then they started asking for money and video games. Then they started asking for the keys to the car. And you're like, oh my gosh, this was such a wonderful thing, but now it's not so wonderful, right? Or remember how great your marriage was at the start? Everybody's all happy. Yeah, you're getting married. Some of y'all need to remember back to that. Sometimes we start things like in this glorious state and then it starts to deteriorate because we start doing things in our own power. There's this verse. I think this verse pretty much summarizes the whole Bible, the relationship of God to man. It says this. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean on your own understanding. What happens a lot of times is God sets us out on a path. He gives us a gift. He gives us a gift of our children, of our marriage. And we start going along on the path and we start going, oh, thank you, God, for this wonderful gift you gave me. I'll take it from here. I got this figured out now. I read a book on marriage. I read a book on parenting. And you start doing things in your own understanding because that's our natural nature is we just want to do things on our own. And what happens is oftentimes God will you give you a gift or something and, and, and you'll start, you know, like you'll have that gift, but then you'll start to try and figure it out on your own how to do things. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. What I see a lot of times is people will, will what they'll do is, is, is they'll do it in reverse order. They'll say, lean on your own understanding and then believe. And then they think the Lord's going to come and bless their own understanding. I had a girl one time, she came to me and she said, hey, um, I'm, let me tell you about this guy. I'm going to get married to him. He's wonderful, this and that. And she's telling me all these things and I'm hearing red flag, red flag, red flag. I don't think this is the guy you're supposed to marry. She's like, so in closing, I just know the Lord has told me I'm supposed to marry him. What do you think? It's like, well, what does it matter what I think? If the Lord told you what you're supposed to do, I can't say anything. And what happens, I see this a lot of times, is we decide what we want to do, and then we're like, and I think the Lord is going to bless that. That's what the Lord wants for me. And I'm like, did you check with anybody before you went down this path? Because I see a lot of red flags, and then they get down the road, and they're like, God, why'd you do this to me? Like, well, don't be blaming God for it. You wanted what you wanted. You got it, and now you're blaming God? It doesn't work that way. You've got to trust the Lord with all your heart and don't lean on your understanding. You've got to seek his understanding for how to live the life. And we start that way usually, but after things start going pretty good, what do we do? We try and take back the reins. We're like, I'll ride this horse myself. And we get in trouble. And what I think is fascinating here is that Peter had been assigned a job. If you remember the first time that this happened to Peter, he had been fishing all night. He meets Jesus for the first time and Jesus says, Peter, throw your nets on the other side. He's like, I've been fishing all night. I know what I'm doing. He's like, just do it. And he does it, he catches all this fish. And he's like, surely you're the Lord. And then the Lord says to Peter, Peter, now I don't want you to be catching fish. I want you to be catching men. He gives him a new assignment. Love those children, right? <laughs> feel for the parents. God bless this. God bless them. All right. So Peter's out fishing again. And I kind of wonder if he forgot what he was supposed to be doing. 
Like he went back to fishing. Maybe he felt all that guilt because he had denied Jesus. And you'll see, if you read through this passage in the end, Jesus restores Peter through this. But I kind of wonder if the reason it wasn't working for Peter that night was because God was trying to get his attention and say, hey, I don't want you doing that anymore. I got a new calling on your life and you're going back to what you used to know. And how often do we do that when things get hard or we feel bad about ourselves? We go back to the old habits. We go back to the old ways. God did a miracle in our life. He changed your destiny. He changed the course of your life. And what do we do? We tend to go back to that old way. Maybe God's trying to get your attention if it's not working. Second, Maybe it's just you. Maybe there's something God's called you to do and you're not doing it or you started doing it and then you lost, you got distracted. We get distracted a lot of times. There's this, uh, there's this monk, a guy named Thomas Akempis. He wrote this book called The Imitation of Christ. It's the second best-selling Christian book behind the Bible in the world. And he says this, he was writing to monks and he was writing to monks who was, that, that their job was to be in their cell and pray all day, right? And he said to them, every time you leave your cell, you come back less a man. And what he's saying here is, he's, he's talking to all of us, and he's saying, anytime you leave your area of primary responsibility, what you're supposed to be doing, you lose power. And this happens to a lot of us a lot of times. We know we've got a responsibility. We know God's calling us to do something. We know we're supposed to be staying in this lane, and we get distracted and we start doing other stuff. And when we start doing other stuff apart from what God's called us to do, we lose power. You come back a little less a man or a little less a woman. And this happens a lot of times when it gets hard with parenting and you find ways to distract yourself. When it gets hard in your marriage and you find ways to distract yourself. When it gets hard in your finances and you just throw up your hands like me and fishing and go, that doesn't work for me. The financial thing doesn't work for me. I had a guy one time come to me. He's like, I'm so stressed out about my finances. I think I'm just going to take a world cruise. <laughs> but in that human nature, we do that sometimes. Like, I'm just so stressed. I need to spend a lot of money to get my financial situation under control because it's so stressful. What? That doesn't even compute. Sometimes we're doing stuff that doesn't even make sense. And only you can figure that out. But, but what's fascinating about this story is, and I love this about this story. When Jesus asked them if they were catching any fish, when he asked them if it was working, what did they say? No, no. they were honest. And one of the mistakes I see people make a lot, and I, I see this in counseling, I see this in being a pastor, is we lie to ourselves. You know, a bunch of guys in a, in a, in a boat, another guy yells at them, are you catching anything? What's the answer? You lie. Yeah, we're doing good, man. It's good. We just threw a bunch of fish back in and, you know. You know. <laughs> but they were honest. They're like, it's not working for us. And what I see a lot of times is when something's not working, we'll lie to ourselves and tell, us, tell ourselves it's better than it is. And we'll actually start to believe the lie. I had a girl one time, she was sitting with Emily and me and she was telling me, she's like, yeah, me and my sister, were super close. She's my best friend in the whole world. I'm like, oh, that's sweet. And a few minutes later, she's like, yeah, my sister hasn't talked to me in a year and a half. Um, because I'm dating this guy. She doesn't think I should be dating. And then I'm like, stop, wait, hold up. Did you just say you and your sister are super close, but you haven't talked in a year and a half because she doesn't like the guy you're dating? That doesn't compute as super close. She was like, oh, yeah, yeah I guess that is a problem. <laughs> she had been lying to herself because she wanted what she wanted. She wanted to date this guy, and the sister didn't agree with it. And so this relationship was severed, but she wouldn't acknowledge it. And listen, you'll never get anywhere lying to yourself. And the world operates on lies. And the question you've always got to ask yourself is, how is it working out for them? There are so many lies flying around in our world today. And some of them we brush off as, oh, that's cute, right? Yeah, oh, that guy wants to pretend he's a girl and race other girls in swimming contests? Oh, isn't that sweet? Isn't it great that he's self-actualizing? You're like, no, it's not great. And it's not cool to just go, oh yeah, that's cool. And our participating in the lie makes us liars. And you can't participate in the lie because you become what you practice. And if you practice lying and if you practice going along with lying, lying eventually you become a liar. And here's the really bad part about lies. I've seen this in counseling. If you lie to yourself long enough, you'll actually start to believe your lies. I've talked to so many people, they've gone down, they become deluded because they believe the lies so much. I was talking to this one lady one time and she was telling me about how she was such a victim and her, how her kids hated her. 
And it was her husband's fault for poisoning them against her. And I was like, actually, no, the reality is you abandoned your kids. But she had, she had come up with a, like this really intricate lie in her mind about what had happened. And she started to believe the lie. And, and, and the crazy thing is she would post how, how great and liberating her life was and how she was living her best life on social media. But I knew the back story. And I would say, you're lying to yourself. Get honest. If you want Jesus to come to your rescue and help things work out, you can't tell him, yeah, we're catching fish. It's good to go, man. You got to get honest about your situation. And I know that sounds brutal and harsh, but listen, it doesn't do you any good to participate in lies. It just weakens you. And we live in a society that functions off of lies. And it looks like everything's working out for them from their lies, but it's not. You don't know the backstory. You hear about all these suicides and things going on of these famous people. There's a good chance that they were lying to themselves in certain ways. I don't know. Suicide's complex. But listen, we all have this tendency to lie to ourselves. And you'll never get anywhere lying to yourself. And you'll really never get anywhere participating in a lie that society is telling you around you. Even if they say, it's cool. It's not that big of a deal. If you know in your heart it's not the truth and you participate in it, you become one of them. It's a very dangerous, slippery slope. You must be dedicated to the truth in your life. And if something isn't working for yourself, don't lie and tell yourself it is working because Jesus can't come to your rescue if you're lying to yourself. Until we, if we confess that we need him, like if you confess, in, in your, if you believe in your heart that he is God and confess with your mouth, he rose from the dead. You've got to confess your sins. He's faithful and just to forgive you. He'll cleanse you from all unrighteousness. He'll put you on the path. But it starts with telling yourself the truth. Admit what I'm doing is not working. And when you do that, all of a sudden you open the door for God to come in. Which brings to the third point. There's a good chance that it's just a timing issue. Maybe you've been trying and trying and trying. You've been staying faithful. You've been doing everything you know to do and it's just not happening. There's this verse in Ecclesiastes I love. This is my favorite book of the Bible. It says, he has made everything beautiful in its time. He's also set eternity in the human heart, yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. Some of you have been planting some really, like you've been planting seeds in your life and you've been going, God, why aren't they coming up? And listen, how goofy would a farmer be if when he planted a seed, he came back every morning and was like, is it growing? And dig it up. You'd be like, you're sabotaging it. You've got to plant the seed and then you've got to be patient and wait and water the seed. And listen, Pastor Marcus said this a few weeks ago. It was so profound. He's like, it doesn't come at the speed of light. It comes at the speed of a seed. The promise of God in your life, what he's promised, if you're planting good seeds is you will reap a good harvest but it's not going to come right away. And any farmer that plants something and expects it to pop up the next day is, is a dumb farmer. <laughs> they know it takes time and it takes watering. And some of you, you've been planting good seeds. And listen to me, the harvest is just around the corner. So don't give up. Stay true to it. Stay faithful. It says, it says that we will reap a harvest if we don't give up. So don't walk away from what you've been planting just because it's gotten hard or it's taken longer than you wanted. And I wonder if maybe Jesus just wanted them to have this experience in the boat of not getting the fish, just to remind them that when he comes in, one touch of his favor could launch them to places they could never go on their own. When God gets involved in your situation, just like when Jeff brought the right materials for me to go fishing, even a dumb fisherman like me could pull in fish. The same is true for your life. When God gets involved, all the stuff you're saying, man, it's just not working, but I've been trying to be faithful. It may just be a timing issue. If you've been honest with yourself and telling the truth, if you've been patiently waiting, if you've been staying in your lane and doing what you know you're supposed to be doing, it may just be that God's just like, hey, wait, I just, just hold on a little bit because in just a second, I'm going to breathe in your direction and I'm going to launch you to right where you need to be because one touch of God's favor can change everything in your life in one instant. One phone call, one meeting, one supernatural appointment, and God can change everything in your life. You've just got to stay faithful because it may just be a timing issue. So if you've been holding on, God, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. My marriage is never going to get better. My kids are never going to get better. My finances are never going to get better. If you're being honest with yourself and you're telling the truth, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, hang on. Because at the right moment, Jesus might just show up on the shore and go, hey, watch this. 
I got something glorious for you. And what he does have for you is glorious. It's exceedingly, abundantly, far above all you can ask or think. The path of the righteous is like the light of dawn. It keeps shining brighter and brighter and brighter. So if it's not beautiful in your life yet, he's not done. So here's my final closing point. If you learn to obey when you hear the voice of God, you can be confident you will eventually succeed. When you hear the voice of God, do what he says. And some of you, you've gotten distracted. You heard the voice of God, but you got distracted and you're like, I don't know why it's not working. Why, did you do the last thing he told you? If you haven't heard anything new from God, do the last thing he told you. When I was uh, in my junior year of college, it was getting really hard. I was getting tired. I was getting exhausted. I was paying for college with cash. It was just taking all of my energy. I was working long time, long hour days to pay the college and I, I was walking out of class one day, just exhausted, about to drop out of college. And a guy's smiley face said, hey, how would you like the rest of your college paid for? I was like, yes, please. And he's like, all you got to do is sign up for the military for five years. <laughs> and I was like, I love the military. My dad was in the military. Sign me up. So I went and I called my dad and I was like, dad, I want to get in the military. He's like, really? I, that's not new, new to me. Yeah, you haven't said that before. And I was like, well, they've offered to pay for school. I think God might be speaking to me. And he's like, well, I'm all for the military. My dad was in the military. My, my family is military family. He's like, but I don't know if that's what God's telling you to do. I think you might be trying to find an easy way out. And I'm like, well, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. He's like, well, what was the last thing God told you? And I was like, well, he told me to go to college. And he's like, have you finished? <laughs> it's like, well, no. And he's like, well, finish it. And then God will give you your next instructions. And some of you are looking for God to give you a new word and he's already given you a word. You just need to stick with what he's told you to do. Stay faithful and at the right time, you will reap a harvest if you don't give up. It may just be a timing issue. You receive that? Let me pray for you. Father, we thank you so much that you are guiding and directing us. And as we obey your word, as we obey what you've called us to do, I know, Lord, that you will lead us to where we are supposed to be. At the right time, we will reap a reward. We will bring in that, all those fish as we obey you. So I pray, Lord, if this is morning, maybe some of you, maybe you've been trying to get some of these people in here's attention, Lord. I pray if, 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 if they're here this morning and that's one of them, I pray, Lord, that you would just quicken to their mind that you're trying to get their attention. For those here this morning, Lord, that we've been maybe lying to ourselves. We haven't been telling ourselves the truth about where we're at, the fact that we aren't catching any fish. We've been telling ourselves, ah, it's okay. I pray, Lord, we would humble ourselves and say, Lord, without you, we can do nothing. We will trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lean not on our own understanding. And for those here, Lord, that have been waiting for a long time for that harvest, Lord, I pray this morning you would infuse them with a new sense of purpose and calling, that they would stay faithful to what you've called them to do because it may just be a timing issue. And in the right moment when you breathe in our direction, everything changes. So we thank you, Lord, that you are for us. You are not against us. You are the path of the righteous like the light of dawn. You who began a good work in us will be faithful to complete it. And we trust that. In Jesus' name. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings. <laughs>